Welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at um, uh, the primary way that God speaks to us through that uh, one is his word. And uh, we saw how God speaks to us through his word. Uh, he speaks to us through the instruction in his word, through a quickening in God's word. So the important thing is that, you know, when you are making important decisions in life, any decision, you know, uh, uh, even small decisions can matter, can be very, very important. It's important for us to read God's word, meditate on God's word, dwell on God's word, and see what God is telling us, leading us, and guiding us to uh, do. Okay. Now, there are a couple of uh, personal life examples that the pastor has shared regarding uh, his own, um, uh, you know, life journey and how he received a quickening word from God. So since all of you like stories and like to read, I'm sure you would read this, but please don't read it when I'm teaching now. Please listen to the lecture. Uh, you can always, uh, you know, you have the pub uh, publication with you, the soft copy or the hard copy. You can always take time to read it. It's just a quick reading. It'll just also help you to know um, you know, uh, and discern how God leads us through scripture. So I'm not going to, there are many um, examples that Pastor Ashish has uh, shared in this book that he's written uh, from his own life story and a life example. I'm not going to share it all because of the lack of time. I will have to finish this book in another huge publication uh, that we have to finish. So I'm not going to look at all the examples. And since all of you like to read stories and are very interested about what, how God has ministered to various people, their testimonies, I'm sure you will take the time to read. So I'm leaving that to uh, you to uh, read. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on. The third way that God uh, speaks to us through scripture is through the word preached. Now, um, you know, when uh, this is another common way that God speaks to us and guides us through his written word is when his word is being preached. So when you are in a place where God's word is being preached, you can listen to the sermon and you can feel that sermon is exactly just speaking to you, to your situation and what you're going through uh, in life. And um, uh, it can also be that there are so many people there in that room, you know, or the hall, and, uh, you know, God can be speaking to just that one sermon. He can speak to multiple people at the same time, and only God can do something uh, like this. So God can use his word, this written word uh, that is preached to bring about counsel in so many different people's lives, in so many different matters and areas of their um, uh, a life. Okay, so uh, sometimes even when you hear multiple sermons, different preachers over, a, uh, you know, a couple of weeks or months, you can say, you know, or you can just feel that uh, God is speaking to you through each of that sermons, you know, he's talking about your situation and what he wants you to uh, uh, do. So even as you receive it from God, you know, just uh, uh, believe on it, act on it. God is guiding you. He's leading you. And it's your time to listen, even as you're seeking, you're listening, and then you need to obey what God is asking you to do. I remember that, you know, when I had to go to about Bible college, God was asking me to go to Bible college and, you know, into full-time ministry. And that was not something I wanted to do. That's something that I um, uh, actually thought or envisioned for myself. And it was a big question mark. And I had a lot of doubts and uh, I was very burdened. Um, and I remember going to church and I was just saying, God, please speak to me. And, um, you know, uh, that Sunday when, when the, the the pastor preached, he said, you know, you can't serve two masters. You either serve God or mammon, okay? You serve God or money. And I remember telling God, you know, I like to do something secular, but I can always serve you in the free time that I have. Um, and God was telling me directly, you know, you, you have to choose. You can't serve two masters at the same time. And that is, and that came like a rhema word from that preacher. I remember the preacher's name as well. The, say, the, the picture is very, very clear in my mind uh, you know and I, I made a decision that day that God I will choose uh, you know you and uh, uh, I will choose to obey what you are calling me to do so it was that's when I made a decision when the word was being uh, preached so God can use the 
word that is preached to you know minister to us in our situations but it's our decision uh, and our choice what we want to do and how we turn around and obey the um, Lord the fourth thing is through the inner voice that is a voice of our conscience now we are tripart beings we are three-part beings we are made up of body soul and spirit and um, us uh, are uh, just like our uh, body, you know, can see, hear, speak, and feel, um, uh, the same way our spirit man has these faculties. This, our spirit man can also hear, see, speak, and feel. So in our spirit, we can see, we can feel, we can speak, um, uh, we can um hear from um, God and you know so our spirit man parallels our outer man because you know we can hear see feel and speak as well and our conscience is our spirit speaking uh, to us our conscience is the voice of our human uh, spirit let's just look at um, uh, three scripture passes one is Job chapter 32 verse 8 can somebody read that please and someone else can read Psalm 51 verse 6 and someone else can read Proverbs chapter 20 verse 27 Job chapter 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and breath of Almighty gives him understanding Thank you. Uh, so when it says, it says that, uh, uh, you know, God speaks to the spirit man, he breathes upon the uh, spirit man. Breathes means God inspires, he releases, he reveals things where in our spirit um, man. And when he releases things in our spirit man, it gives us understanding. So what we receive in our spirit man is then, you know, sent to our mind. So our mind is basically our processor, which processes everything that we receive from the spirit world in our spirit man and also from the natural world through our body. Okay. Psalm 51 verse 6, please. Can somebody read that? Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Amen. Thank you, Sonia. So here the hidden part is actually our spirit man. So God desires truth in our spirit man, in our inward part, in our hidden part. And where does he make his wisdom known? He makes his wisdom known. Uh, he gives us understanding and wisdom in our inward parts or in our hidden part. And that is the sp in our spirit man. Okay. So it's in our spirit that God speaks to us, reveals things to us, gives us wisdom and understanding. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. So, amen. Thank you. So it says here that the spirit of man is a lamp. Now, what does a lamp do? Or what does a torchlight do? Or a, a ray of light do? It actually helps us when we are searching for something, when we're looking for something. Light also guides us in the right step, the right path that we need uh, to go. So it says here the spirit of a man actually searches that man and guides that man in what he needs to go or where he or she needs to um, go. Okay, so our conscience is our own spirit speaking to us, is the voice of our human spirit of what God is speaking to us in our spirit man. Okay, our conscience bears witness um, or speaks aligned to what has been written on our hearts. Okay, which means you know, if your uh, conscience or your spirit man is being fed with the things of the word of God, the word of God is written on your heart and your mind, then your spirit man is going to respond to the word of God. So every time you're making a decision, you're doing something, you're saying, hey, what does the word of God say? And the word of God comes quickly into your mind. And hey, the word of God tells me to do this. I have to do this. Or the word of God says I need to uh, uh, obey him or I need to follow in this path. That's what I need to do. So, you know, uh, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 and 11 says that the part of the new covenant, God says, I will write my laws, I will write my word upon your heart and your mind. And each one will know the Lord okay so our conscience bears with 
a witness or speaks a line to what has been written on our heart and our mind. Now, if uh, in our heart and mind, the things of the world has been written, maybe the, the knowledge of the world, the literature of the world, the logic of the world, the philosophies of the world has been written, or we are just you know, living according to the standards of the world, watching a lot of movies, you know, hearing from our friends, that is what is our conscience is going to respond to, or our spirit man is going to respond to when we are making decisions uh, in various stages of our life. But if in our conscience or in our spirit man, the word of God is written on our heart and mind, then we are quick to listen to what to, and know what the word of God is telling us, and we will obey and we will do as is written in the word word of God. I hope you're able to understand what I'm saying. Um, okay. And then when when we are, uh, God's word or his law is written on our heart and mind, that is why it says we need to meditate on God's word. Then, you know, our conscience becomes a re reliable guide. We can trust our conscience because we know our conscience is speaking aligned to God's word um, because you're feeding your uh, heart and mind with God's word and it's according to what God has written in his uh, word okay but if you're listening to a conscience that is not pure not holy to the things of the world then you your conscience does not become a reliable um, guide okay so when you know when you're doing something wrong, when your conscience pricks you, you know this is not what God wants me to do, say or act, or this is not what is according to his word, and then you will do what is according to his word and you will do what is right. Okay. The last thing is we need to rightly divide the word of God as we read in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, where Paul is writing to young Timothy and is telling him, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So how do we handle God's word? We rightly need to divide God's word, which means we need to understand God's word, interpret um, you know, um, God's word in the light of the rest of scripture and what he has mentioned in that specific context. So if we misinterpret God's word, we will misapply God's word in our life. And then we will see that everything seems to be going wrong in our life. So that is why it's important for us to have a correct understanding of God's word, which will not lead to misinterpretation or misapplication. But when we have a right interpretation of God's word, it will help us to understand and will also not lead us to strange or uh, wrong doctrines, but will be able to lead us in the right way and we will make the right decisions. And hence, it is important for us, like I said in the beginning, to understand the whole counsel of God, which means understand the scripture's entirety in its whole context, know the entire scripture, read the entire scripture, so you know what God is saying. Okay. Before we end this chapter, uh, important note is we don't misuse scripture. So you don't, you know, you want to make a decision. You just don't say, okay, God, you know, open my um, eyes to the right passage, right to sun. So whichever my eyes, wherever my eyes fall in, when I open, this is my Bible, I'm just opening it and I'm just reading it. Whatever is written there, you know, is the answer for my problem. We can't do this. This is not magic. Um, you know, this is not something that we do as, um, uh, you know, magicians, God's word. We don't handle that uh, God's word that way. But what we need to do, or we don't play with God's word this, this way, but we need to read scripture, meditate on it, the entirety, and ask God to reveal and show us what he's asking us to do. The other thing also we don't do is, you know, we don't misinterpret content scripture to satisfy our own selfish interests and wants and needs and twist it and turn it so that we it can apply to us in our context and we feel very happy that's when we end up in all wrong doctrines wrong decisions and we blame god and say god you know you told me from your word this 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 and now you know i'm facing all these wrong uh, decisions uh, and we get angry, we go away from God. Well, God is not to be blamed. It's because we didn't look at scripture and interpret it in the right way it had to be done. Okay. So that is chapter three for us. The primary way that God leads us is through scripture and how he leads us. Anyone has any questions? Chapter three.
Okay, if there are no questions in chapter three, we'll move on to chapter four. Okay, I said two primary way God leads us. One is through his word. The second one is through the, in, uh, the Holy Spirit. So chapter four is about the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus, when he was going back to the Father, he told his disciples he would send us another helper. And that helper is the Holy Spirit, John chapter 14, verse 16. And the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us. So can somebody please read John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14, please, for us? John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. So notice that Jesus said he will speak, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. So does the Holy Spirit speak? Yes, Jesus says here that he will speak to you. So the Holy Spirit does speak to you and I, but we need to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, okay? And Jesus also says in this passage that He will, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, okay? Guide you means He will lead you. He will show you the way into all truth. Not only the truth concerning the things of God um, uh, in Scripture, but all that concerns God's truth for your life. So how do you live out that truth in your life? He will guide you into all of what you need to live and how you need to uh, live your life. Okay. And this passage of Scripture that was read to us, we also see that Jesus says that he will take from him and, uh, you know, or he'll take what I am speaking and speak it to you. So can you imagine that you and I actually have a hotline uh, to heaven? We have a hotline to heaven, which means, you know, Jesus will take, uh, sorry, the Holy Spirit will take what Jesus is speaking and he will speak it to us or he will reveal it to us. He will make it known to us. So the Holy Spirit will do that for each one of us and he will also show us things to come, which means he will show us things uh, that, are, that are to come ahead of um, time. So how wonderful it is for you and I uh, to know that, you know, the Holy Spirit reveals to us things that are going to happen in our life, what is going to happen five years down the line, what is happening 10 years down the line, you know, or two years or one year so that we can prepare ourselves for that. And that is so wonderful. Yes, Gertrude, you had your hand, you have your hand up, you have a question. Uh, yes, uh, sister. I just wanted to ask now, because in the Olden Testament, uh, David, the, he inquired of the Lord. But now New Testament, uh, do we need to inquire because of we have the Holy Spirit given to us? Yes, we still need to inquire. We still need to ask. And when uh, that is why we said that, you know, God is the first <clears throat> chapter. God is willing to guide us. But we need to seek. We need to listen. And we need to obey so god is willing uh, to reveal things but we need to ask why does god want us to ask why does he not just reveal or just give us a download when we're going through a problem and situation because god has given us the free moral will to choose okay we can choose we can either choose to listen to man our own voice what we can what we think we can do or we can listen to god so you know God wants us to exercise that moral, free moral will that he's given us to choose. And so when we come to him and ask, he does reveal it to us. Yes. Thank you, sister. Yeah. So how wonderful it is that, you know, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us ahead of time what is going to happen in our um, lives. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. He will do that for you. So all we need to do is to open our hearts and say, God, or we need to just say, Jesus, you know, I want to experience this. I want to experience, you know, how you reveal things, how I can walk in it, how you can reveal things about my future. I just want to experience this. I want to walk uh, in this in my life. You know, just I'm opening my heart and mind to uh, receive it. Look at what First Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 to 16 says. Can somebody read that please? 
First Corinthians 2, 9, 16. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Yeah, you can go ahead till verse uh, 16. For what man uh, knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Sister Gertrude. So there are these wonderful things that God has prepared for you and me as believers and as also as individuals. And there are wonderful things that God has prepared. It's already planned. He's already planned these things ahead of time. But now, you know, how are you and I going to get to know these things that God has prepared uh, for us? So in verse 10, he says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So you see, God has prepared these nice things for you and me. And he is not saying, well, I got some nice good things for you. But I'm, you know, but I'm going to let you know what it is, or I'm not going to let you know what it is, and that you know there is no point in that. But he says that he has revealed them to us by his spirit. So the Holy Spirit you know, wants to come and reveal these things to you and uh, me. And um, you know, verse eleven he says, uh, you know, for who has known the things of man except the spirit of man? the spirit of God now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit was that is from God that we might know the things that has been given to us freely by God so what Paul is saying is is the Holy Spirit who knows all these things and the Holy Spirit has been given to us for what purpose he is the Holy Spirit has been given to us for a purpose so that we can know the things that have been freely given to us by God so does God want you to know the things he's really given to you and me? Yes, he does. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us so that you and I can know the things that has been freely given to us because God wants us to know. So you don't have to go and ask somebody else. The Holy Spirit is in you. He's going to talk to you. He's going to reveal it to you. He's going to let you know the things that you know has been freely given to you by um, God. Okay, so verses 13 and 14, we see that, you know, um, says when these things, uh, these things we also speak not in words with man's wisdom uh, teaches, but with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So when we talk about these things, the natural man finds it hard to understand, okay? Uh, so what do we learn from it? We, we don't look at things from the natural, the natural mind because it says these things need to be spiritually discerned, which means we require the wisdom and the spiritual understanding to discern these things, to understand these things so we need to look at them with the natural um, mind okay and then he says in what goes on to talk about uh, verses 15 and 16 he says but who but who he was 
sorry, verses 15 and 16 says, But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one, who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. So in this whole process, because the Holy Spirit is revealing things to you, the end result is that you and I have the mind of Christ. That means we know what God is saying, we know what he is thinking because we receive his mind and his mind has been given to us or revealed to us by the Holy Spirit. So as a believer, you can know the mind of Christ. Uh, you know, we can know God's thoughts. We can receive his ideas. We can understand his plans. We can understand his ways. Why? Because we have the mind of Christ. So we need to say this often to ourselves we can need to reiterate this often to ourselves we need to tell ourselves you know because i have the mind of christ i know the thoughts of god i can receive his ideas i can understand his plans i can understand his ways because i have the mind of christ so keep saying this to yourself you know i know the thoughts of god i receive his ideas i understand his plans i understand his ways because i have the mind of Christ. Okay. Now, when you're about to make a decision, um, um, you know, uh, so, you know, and it, you 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 need to know what to do. Uh, you can go back to God's word because God's word is the truth, and the Holy Spirit will also reveal the mind of Christ to you and to uh, me. So, in this whole process of the Holy Spirit speaking to us, there are several ways in, he, in which uh, he would speak to us. So there are several ways in which the Holy Spirit will uh, speak to us. Uh, he will you know, speak to us to the inner witness uh, or to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, so let's look at the different ways that the Holy Spirit will speak to us. The first one is to the inner witness or uh, and the voice of the Holy um, Spirit. Uh, let's look at Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 16. So can somebody please read Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and 16, please? For Romans. as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So it says here, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Or you can say it like this, every child of God, every son and daughter of God has the privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, you can ask yourself, who is leading me? Or who? what is driving me? Or what is motivating me? You know, is it the Holy Spirit who is leading you, who is guiding you, who is motivating you? Or it is the world or it's people who are leading you, guiding you and motivating you? And then in verse 15, he says, you know, um, uh, we have received the spirit of adoption. So the Holy Spirit is a spirit of adoption, which means how do we know that we are the children of God? It's because what is mentioned in verse 16, it says the Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. God. So how do you know that you are a son or daughter of God? How do you know that you're a child of God? You know, did you get a heavenly birth certificate? No, you did not, you know, get a heavenly birth certificate. So how do you know that you are the, a, a child of God, a son or daughter of God? Because what the verse 16 says, the Holy Spirit bears, which means the Holy Spirit testifies, the Holy Spirit affirms, he's giving us the assurance, he's giving us a confirmation inside us and um, you know, and we read this in the scripture and it says, you know, that that we are the children of God. So from this passage, we understand that the inner witness of the Holy Spirit confirms and leads us, or the Holy Spirit by his inner witness confirms and leads us in the way that we need to go. So what is this inner witness? This inner witness is actually an inner conviction. 
It's an inner knowing. It's an inner assurance that the Holy Spirit places inside of us. It can come through an impression. It can come through feelings. It can come through sensations that the Holy Spirit uh, puts in us. And uh, it's an inner witness, something in your spirit that you sense that comes from the Holy Spirit. You can't explain it, but you just know, you know, you just can sense, you can just feel, and you know it is nothing but or no one else but God, the Holy Spirit. So it's it just comes into your spirit man to the Holy Spirit, and He's bearing witness in your spirit. He's giving you that conviction, that confirmation, the assurance um, by giving you an impression, um, and you know, and He's giving you the feelings and the sensation in your uh, spirit. So. Uh, to help us understand the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, there are eight common ways by which you can, uh, you and I can receive the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So just to help us understand uh, the inner witness of the Holy Spirit, there are eight ways that are listed here. You know, the first one is to the quickening of Scripture. The second one is the assurance within the third one is the desire within. The fourth is the knowing within. The fifth is the prompting within. The sixth is the stirring within. The seventh is the foreknowledge within. And the eighth one is the warning within us. Okay. So we look at each of these in detail um, to help us understand how the Holy Spirit bears inner witness in our spirit man. The first one is the quickening of scripture. Now I'm not going to explain this because I just explained this in the previous lesson um, just before we went for our break. So you know the different ways the Holy Spirit um, quickens our script uh, to scripture. So Rema word, a word, passage, uh, a word just sleeps out at us to a familiar passage to the you know the um, uh, to the uh, word that is preached, uh, you know, so the Holy Spirit can, uh, you know, quicken scripture uh, to us. The second way is it can come through an assurance within, okay? Uh, it can come through an assurance within, a desire within, uh, you know, or it's a knowing within, or it's a prompting, or, you know, a different ways that the Holy Spirit can um, minister to us. Um, and we need to be aware of these things, and we need to pay attention, knowing, and also have a sensitive heart, uh, you know, being a heart that is sensitive to the Spirit, being uh, sensitive to what the Lord is speaking to us, what God is putting in our spirit, man. And then when we begin to pick up this inner witness, you know, uh, then we are led by the Holy um, Spirit, okay? If we have receiving no witness in our spirit man, that means the Holy Spirit is not speaking to us. Maybe we need to continue with what he's asking us to do or he's revealed to us already till he reveals to us the next step. Okay, so the first way that we know um, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit bears inner witness is through the quickening of scripture um, that we already saw. The second one is with the assurance within, and this assurance within comes through the peace of God. It's primarily the peace of God. So when you are praying about something, you know, when you sense the peace of God, it's basically God saying, okay, go ahead, you know, take on or engage in that, or contact that person, or go ahead with that person, you know. Uh, um, so it's just um, um, a signal that gives us that we can, you know, we can go ahead. So the peace of God, uh, you know, works in us in several multiple purposes. We see this in um, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Can somebody read that, please? Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. So here we see that, you know, God's peace protects our hearts and our minds. So once you're going through something, you've released your cares to the Lord, the peace of God guards your heart and mind. And um, so when there are other institutions 
that will come in and disturb you know will try to disturb your heart and mind the peace of god will guard it and you can walk in peace which means you know that you know god is guarding you protecting you he's he's there with you he's assuring you he's also leading you and guiding you okay but the peace of god can also serve another very important purpose in our lives and we read about this in colossians chapter 3 verse 15 can somebody read that please and let peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. So it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. The word rule here in Greek means to be an empire. Okay, Basically, it means to decide, uh, to determine, to direct, to control, and to govern. So this peace of God in your heart serves to guide you. It serves uh, to, you know, uh, to it's, uh, direct you, to control your action. It means if there is a peace of God, it's, uh, the peace of God is like an empire. It's like uh, uh, a deciding factor in your uh, heart. So, you know, um, uh, when you're trying to pray about some situation, you're asking God to lead you, guide you, show you the way, or is this the right thing for you to do, then you will sense peace in your heart. So when you sense peace in your heart, it's basically the peace of God is like the empire. It's telling you, hey, go ahead, you can do it, you know, engage in that, start that, okay, go to that place, speak to that person. Um, but if you don't sense the peace of God in your heart, there's restlessness, there's anxiety, that's worry, then God is basically telling you, hey, don't in, uh, go there, you know, don't uh, involve with that person, this is not the right thing, this is not the right door, this is not what I have planned for uh, you, okay? So the Bible says that peace, joy are the fruits of the uh, Spirit. So. Uh, if there is peace, if the Holy Spirit is releasing that peace in your heart, you know that the presence of peace is like the green signal. You can go ahead, um, you know, you can do what God is asking you to do. The presence of peace and joy uh, is like the green signal is asking you to go ahead. But if you feel restless, disturbed, uneasy, and there's absence of peace about the thing that you're going to do, then it's like the red signal that's telling you, don't do it. Okay? Now, the third way that God leads us is um, uh, through the desire within, okay? Uh, let's read Psalm chapter 37, verse 4, please. Can somebody read Psalm 37, verse 4? Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. It says the word give here in the Hebrew is very interesting because it's a very broad word, and one part of that word, uh, you know, the meaning of that word uh, means, you know, um, uh, he will put, okay, or he will form, or he will create in you. So he will put it in you. So you, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will put those desires in your heart. And it also means that he will bring it to you. So not only does he put those desires in you, but he will also bring those desires uh, to you. That means he will give you the desires. So the point here, and I want you to understand, is that as God's people, when we live in this posture or in the way of delighting ourselves in God, then the desires that are created in your heart are actually put there by God. So you just like you said, your conscience, and you you know you feed your conscience with uh, with God's word, then your conscience becomes a real reliable guide. You know you don't have to wonder, hey, am I doing the right thing? Is this what God wants me to do? Is it right? You know, you don't son. But if you're somebody also who's in that right posture, where you're saying, God, I want to delight myself in you then, you know, the desires that are created in your heart automatically, you know, is being put there uh, by God. Because we looked at this Hebrew word, which uh, give, which means part of it means that God will put it in you, he'll form it in you, he will create in you. It also means that he will bring it to um, 
you okay so um, when you your your um, you delight yourself in the lord in the right po posture you then you know uh, they are those desires are put there by god you don't have to be afraid of those desires or what comes up in your spirit you know and uh, when i'm talking about desires i'm not talking about emotions uh, you know your emotions could d desire some things you know your emotions could desire that you you know you eat all kinds of food uh, you know your your emotions can desire for good food for rich food and all of that but i'm not talking about that kind of desire but i'm talking about what is in your spirit that when you delight yourself in god the desires that are birthed in your spirit are actually put there by god okay so look at how the scripture in proverbs chapter 10 verse 24 says uh, can somebody read that please proverbs chapter 10 verse 24 of the weekend will come upon him yes it says that uh, the fear of the wicked will come upon him and the desires of the righteous will be granted okay why does god tell us so surely that the desires of the righteous will be granted because he knows that you delight yourself in the lord and those desires in your heart have been put there by god and it will be granted because it has been put there by god himself can somebody please read john chapter 15 verse 7 please if you abide in me and my words abide in you you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you amen thank you so it says you know uh, you ask what you desire and be given to you. So here there's a precondition. What is a precondition that your desires will be given to you? Abide, in, abide in God's word. Yes, you need to abide in him and his words abide in you. When you abide in Christ and his words abide in you, then whatever you desire, you know, and you go for it, you know, God will... Uh, provide for you he will he will grant it to you so here's the thing as you and i abide in god the holy spirit births those desires inside you and you just go with um, it okay so that is uh, about desires i'll just give you an example you know for my own life you know when i was very young i didn't know i'll be in full-time ministry but you know uh, i love teaching so um, even when i was in school during summer holidays you know i like to conduct vbs at home for my uh, other two siblings you know my older sister and my younger sister so i would invite them for vbs that i would conduct for them at home uh, we had one at church but this is what i would like to do at home so i would you know get a room cleaned up and i would uh, arrange everything i would tell them i would give them good snacks to eat and i would also go to the pastor and i would you know um, uh, get the uh, scripture references on on those topics and i would prepare those topics and i would ask them to come and teach and i would do all of these things uh, with great enthusiasm just as a child and i never realized that you know for the rest of my life this is what i will be doing in children's ministry you know conducting vbs's and programs and you know writing curriculums for children and so you see this is a desire that was there within it was birthed by God and I can just, you know, see God doing that, uh, you know, um, so many years later of my um, life. And Pastor has also given a couple of examples. So, you know, um, uh, you can read that and you can understand uh, how to know the desires within. So I want to encourage, you, you know, uh, us as believers that desires that are birthed in you, you know, uh, that are birthed by the Holy Spirit by birth by God to do things for the kingdom of God and for the purpose of God and for the glory of um, God and they are put there by the Holy uh, Spirit to stir up those desires in your heart that are there you know uh, that are in you to do things for the kingdom of God for his purpose and for his glory that has been put there by the Holy uh, Spirit so it's the inner witness of the Holy Spirit that is leading you by creating those desires in your heart okay so the next way that we can receive the inner witness the holy spirit the fourth way is a knowing within okay you just know within your heart uh, can somebody read acts chapter 7 verses 23 and 24 please now when he was 40 years old 
it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel, and seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. For he supposed that his brethren would have understood that God would deliver them by his hand, but they did not understand. Amen. Thank you. So here is something that, uh, you know, uh, we can recognize 40 years before Moses saw the burning bush, he had already understood the call of God on his life. So many of many people think that Moses received the call when he was, you know, standing there at the burning bush. That's not true. But it says in scripture that 40 years before the burning bush, Moses understood the call of God. How did he understand the call of God? It says very plainly here that was read to us, it came into his heart. It just came into his heart and he understood that God was going to raise him up to deliver the people. So he understood his calling. How did he understood his calling? It just came into his heart. It was a knowing inside him. So uh, the burning bush was just a wake up for him. It was like God telling him, hey, Moses, I told you 40 years ago, you've forgotten. So, you know, the Holy Spirit to the inner witness creates a knowing inside you. You just know. And it comes into your heart by the inner witness, the Holy Spirit of the plans, the purposes, the directions that God wants you uh, uh, to take. Okay. So, um, uh, see something as significant as Moses, you know, how his life assignment first came through him, uh, not through angels, not through prophetic word, not through dreams, not even through the burning bush. It just simply came by a knowing inside. And that is how the Holy Spirit creates that in you and uh, me. Okay. So if you want to know more about a knowing within, you know, you can just read a couple of, two of uh, pastor's examples that he's given. Uh, even for me, how did I know that God wanted me to go to Bible college is, you know, when um, I was praying, uh, God called me and I just knew that this is God's voice. This is, I just knew clearly, I had no doubts, no questions whether it's God speaking to me and I just knew in my heart that God yes God wants me to go to Bible college he is leading me to Bible college and that is what you know a, a, a stand that I, I took for myself in life also knowing within you know I wanted to work with drug addicts and alcoholics you know counseling them but um, uh, God led me in various stages of my life to do children's ministry and I just suddenly knew inside me that it is not uh, uh, working with drug addicts and alcoholics, it's not counseling them, but it is working with children. So through different, of course, different events that God orchestrated, I just, uh, you know, had this knowing inside and I just followed what God was asking me to do. Okay, we'll stop here. Uh, we'll continue with the, the rest of them uh, in the next class. Anyone has any questions? Uh, if you read pastor's examples, uh, life examples, they're more uh, elaborate, will help you to understand. Uh, we look at 5, 6, 7, 8 next class and you'll be able to understand how the Holy Spirit bears witness in our spirit man. Any questions, anyone, please? No questions? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, we'll end class. Thank you, everyone, for joining class today. I hope uh, you learned something. Please put into practice what we've been learning, uh, even as we study these uh, publications. Have a wonderful, um, restful, refreshing weekend, and I will see you next week. Thank you, everyone.